In this lesson, we're going to take a look at every tool on the toolbar in Flash. So we'll take a look, play around with them, and see what each one does. That way, when you move on to more complicated projects, you'll know what tools you have at your disposal. So let's get started. For this lesson, I am including a sample file so we can open it up and that way you can follow along with everything that I'm doing. So to download it, if you haven't already, just click on the link in your Utorial Player Details box. Once you have the sample file and you have Flash open, simply go to File, Open, locate the sample file, and just double click to open it. Now we'll start at the top of the toolbar and work our way down. Before I begin, I do want to point out a couple of things. If you're ever designing in Flash and you make a mistake, you can always go back one step by going to Edit, Undo. This will take you back to the previous step of what you were doing. Also, if you want to go back to the original document, you can go to File, Revert. And that will basically take your document back to its original state. And I'm pointing this out too because I'll be using these functions throughout this lesson as I'll be going back and forth between tools here. So let's start with the first tool on the toolbar and that would be the selection tool. It's the one that looks like a black arrow. So click that and bring your cursor over to the stage. The selection tool does as the name describes in that it selects parts or objects on the stage. So for instance, we could simply take our cursor over here to the uh, oval and click inside and we will select the inside or the fill color of the oval. Now what good does this do us? Well, we could then manipulate the color by going over to our properties inspector. We can move the color by click and dragging out with the selection tool. Now there's more we can do with the selection tool, but first let me revert my document back here so we can work with the original piece. Now let's say we want to highlight the entire object because right now we can click on the fill or we can click on the line to select either the line or the fill. Well, if you double click on the fill, we now select both the line and the fill and then you can click and drag using your selection tool to move that object around. Now one last thing that the selection tool is good for is manipulating objects on a very simple level but it can be quite powerful actually because you can take an object such as this oval and completely transform it into something else. So taking the selection tool let's move the cursor to about here You'll notice when I place my cursor near the line that a curved line icon appears under the cursor. This means that we can manipulate um, the line or this part of the object. And if we click and hold down our mouse button and then drag the mouse, you'll notice that we have some manipulation going on here. And if I release, you can see that I this basically changed the way the object looks entirely. And you can do this to any part of the edge of the object. So we could just click that edge and drag this up. We could drag this out. And before you know it, you have something that looks completely different than the original oval that we started with. So those are some things to keep in mind with the selection tool. You use the selection tool a lot. It's a pretty simple tool, but it really has quite a um, power to it, especially if you get into manipulating drawings. Okay, I will now just revert my document back and we will resume with the subselection tool. I'll be honest, I don't use the subselection tool a whole lot, but it does have some uses. The subselection tool is the second one and it's the white looking arrow. So be sure you don't confuse it with the selection tool as they both look pretty similar. But click on the subselection tool and come over here to your stage. Basically, the subselection tool allows you to manipulate objects 
using a series of anchors, as I guess I would call them. So to see how this works, let's come up here to the top corner of our stage and click and drag to highlight the entire oval. Once you do that, release, and you'll notice that we have some green dots that surround the oval. Um, these are the anchor points that I was talking about and they allow us now to basically manipulate the object kind of in a controlled setting. So if we were to come up here to one of the anchor points, like I'll just grab this one, click and drag, you'll notice that when I do this, I don't have the same amount of motion that I did with the selection tool, but at the same time, I do have kind of a unique effect going on here because I can turn it and move it up and down like this. And once I release it, you'll see now that it's manipulated in a different way. And we can go through the different anchor points and see how they all react. And basically we can see what these outside ones do. If we click and move up like this, you'll see that we have some limited range of movement here. So basically the subselection tool acts similar to that of the selection tool, but just in a different capacity. It's just one more way to manipulate objects. Now you can move objects with the subselection tool, but it acts a little bit differently. Because right now, if I were to take it, click and drag, you'll notice that I can't do anything with it. Before, you know, you would go grab the object in the center with the selection tool and then you could drag it outward. Here though, we need to highlight the entire object and then come over to the edge here of one of the uh, points or the I guess I should say the edge of the object near one of the points. You'll notice when you do this that a black square appears near the bottom of the cursor. This means that you can take it and move it then. As you can see, I'm clicking and dragging. The black arrow is where um, where you manipulate the object. That comes in when you can manipulate an anchor point of the object. So just keep those things in mind when working with the subselection tool. All right, on to the next. The third tool is the free transform tool. And it actually shares the space with the gradient transform tool. And if you highlight the uh, icon, and you click and hold down your mouse button, you can see both of these tools. They share the same space. So make sure that you have the free transform tool selected. Now the free transform tool allows us to resize and skew objects. So let's come over here to the stage and click and drag to highlight the entire object. Now you'll notice that we have some points. These points allow us to resize the object. So for instance, if we come up here to the top point, you'll notice that our cursor changes to two arrows going up and down. If we click down our mouse button, hold and drag up or down, you'll see that we can resize the object vertically. If we do the same for one of the um, side anchor points, we do the same except we do it horizontally. Finally, the diagonal um, anchor points or the corner ones, I should say, allow us to resize diagonally or basically resize both the vertical and the horizontal at once. So if you click down your mouse button there and drag around, you'll see that we can resize it to basically whatever shape we want. Now one cool thing about this is if we want to resize the object, but keep the proportions, um, because it's kind of hard to keep it exactly in proportion when we're doing this. You can see that I'm a little bit off. I'm making, making it a little bit fatter or skinnier when I'm going along. What you can do is hold down your shift button on your keyboard and then start dragging. You'll see now that I can keep it in proportion and I won't have any danger of making it taller or skinnier or you know more fat. It just goes in proportion with the shape.
So that's one thing to keep in mind if you want to um, resize your things proportionately. Now one more um, asset to the free transform tool is the ability to skew objects. So with your um, object still selected, come over here to the top in between these two points. You'll notice when you place your cursor down that another icon appears. It's kind of like two lines that are horizontal. If we click and drag left or right, you'll notice that we actually skew the object by doing this. And this can provide us with some kind of um, a pretty cool effect when going along here. And it's um, you know good when you're drawing and maybe you want to add some sort of skewed effect to your drawing. And the same can be done with the vertical part. You can skew it along like that, or you can do both. You could skew it like that and then skew it like this and just, well, skew whatever you want to skew basically. So that is what the free transform tool is used for. And as you can see too, if I highlight the object, I can also move it around by simply clicking in the area and just dragging along. So again, the free transform tool has many different uses. Next up is the gradient transform tool. And as I said before, this tool shares a space with the uh, free transform tool. So uh, click and hold down your mouse button on the free transform tool and then select the gradient transform tool. Now in order to get this tool to work, we need to apply a gradient color to our object. So let's click on the selection tool then come over here to your uh, object and click on the center of it to select the fill. Then come over here to your properties inspector and choose the paint bucket icon. And then come all the way down to your colors and choose one of the gradient colors on the bottom here. So I will choose the red one. You'll now notice that your circle or oval has a gradient color applied to it. With that fill still highlighted, come over here and click on the gradient transform tool. You'll notice now that we have some different icons appearing here on the circle. And basically, we can now come in and modify what the gradient looks like on the object. So if we take the cursor and go into the middle here and just click and drag up, we can immediately move the gradient. You'll see that I'm moving the highlighted object or part of it up. As I do this, the fill doesn't go off of the object like it would if we were using the selection tool. It stays within that outline, but just modifies the way or the position that the radiant, that the radial gradient is set in. If we come over here to the side and we get this horizontal arrow cursor to appear and we click and drag, we can expand the gradient outward. As you can see, we are um, expanding the horizontal um, reach of the highlight of that radial gradient. And additionally, we could go inward like this to create a more skinny gradient if we so choose. If we click on the diagonal looking icon right here, we can expand the gradient out to make it bigger or smaller overall, not just, you know, messing with the vertical or horizontal properties of it. And finally, here we can rotate the gradient. So let's say, for instance, that we may have a skinnier gradient like this. We then rotate it. You can see now that we can rotate it within the object, again, giving off basically whatever kind of effect you want. So those are some things you can do with the gradient transform tool.